Here at the top right of Daybreak is our Protoss player. He is down a game. Just basically could have held that last game, but did not manage to pull it off. He is Star Tails Trickster. And here is our Zerg, I almost said Terran for some reason, our Zerg player who kind of revolutionized Zerg versus Protoss before by inventing a build that shut down the fast expand. He used it in the last game. Will he do it again this game? He is Incredible Miracles Lucira. Well, by the looks of it, Trickster wants to go for a fast expand. Obviously, he's put his pylon down the low ground. You know, on a map like this one, you can go Nexus first, but I think to be safe, Trickster's in a dire situation. I think yeah. to be safe, we'll most likely see him go for Forge first. Again, if he loses this, there's actually no chance for him to advance out of this group at all. So this is a really yeah. important match for him. It's his last life, so to speak, in the Arena of Legends. And Lucera just actually made him look silly last game. Yeah. He slapped him down. He, he was like a bear that slapped the trout right yeah, out of well, the river, man. <laughs> I would say that the trout just dove into the bear's mouth that game because it was actually Trickster that made himself look bad. That's true. Um, he just, I mean, like, we just keep going back to it. I'll just say it one more time and be done with it. He had force fields. He didn't use them. The lings got in. That's yeah, all he was, was waiting till the last second, but I feel like he, it wasn't necessary in that case. And then he, when he waited to that last second, he botched it. And then things were just over at that point. Um, now, here's the thing. Trickster, I think he actually might go Nexus first. I mean, obviously, he's saving he up saw the hatch for, first. But yeah, yeah he, he scouted on his pylon, so he was able to find out if it was a pool first or a hatch first. So seeing the hatch first, seeing that there's no spawning pool, it uh, makes complete sense to go for the Nexus first. Still safe. Yeah, absolutely. And this probe Might is, even get a gateway before his forge. This probe is doing some magic, man, to avoid the, the drones of Lucero. Lucero actually pulled four drones. You guys didn't get a shot of it. He pulled four drones to chase that probe. Um, really because he was so nervous dead. about the possibility of being cannoned oh, on this map. Oh, yeah. There are a few places on this map where you can put pylons and wall off a cannon, like you've seen in those. I'm sure you've seen some <laughs> YouTube videos of these these things happening. It's, it's actually a common occurrence. <laughs> I'm just laughing because I saw a player the other day. I, I won't. I won't say their name because it was really embarrassing for them. But they were streaming and uh, they tried to do that, but they didn't know where to put the pylons. And so they made like five pylons, and none of the pylons actually blocked anything. <laughs> so the drones just walked right past the pylons and just killed the cannon. It was the most hilarious thing. It's like obviously that was impromptu and not practiced. <laughs> well, if you can do it well, like a player, a well-known. North American player, wannabe cool. He is really well known for his cannoning. Uh, Optic Zero is actually well known for his cannoning as well. If you can do it well like a player of that cool caliber, guy. then it can be really scary. Now, as you can see, the cannon is up. It's being walled off by the core and the gateway, so it's going to be difficult for Lassier to put on any sort of early aggression. His queens are finishing up here. He's actually mined only 40 additional gas besides his metabolic boost gas, so just got about 40 extra gas. Pulled all of his drones, though, out of the extractor this time instead of just two. Yep, just wants to make sure he gets his economy going nice and strong. And not surprising from a player like Lucera that he would do that. I mean, he is a very good macro player. He went for a timing attack last time, last game, but he really does shine the most when he's playing a macro game. He really does. That's what he's known for. He likes to show the world that, you know, it's not all he has up his sleeve, but he can do it from time to time. Now, Roche Warren going up for Lucera again. I don't think we're going to see anything like we saw last game. No, I don't on. think so. But Stargate going up for Trickster. This is a very different opener than we saw last game, but he's still following up with the Stargate. He might he might still make, like, you know, five roaches just to pressure and then use that to put enough pressure on, on Trickster that he can expand to a third is what I'm thinking. I don't the think he's going to go all in or anything like that. Zealot um, came and took the Watchtower, killed his early. I really like this is a new phenomena, so to speak, where Protosses are being brave with like one Zealot in this type of scenario because most Zergs like Lucera will just be making 10 drones. You can see right now he's making 10 drones. How many Zerglings does he have on the field? Three. Why not just make one Zealot and get out on the map and be annoying like we're seeing right now? Yeah. Force some, some Zerglings. Yeah, make those, sure your opponent can't do Those three Zerglings are not going to kill the Zealot, so you get some free damage. And yeah, I was a little surprised to see his Roche Warren finish and him make 10 drones, even though he knew that Zealot was out there. I think he knew, didn't he? Yeah, he knew. Yeah. Um, 
but even so, the Zealot's not going to be able to kill this hatchery on its own. And he's actually still making drones as if he's not noticed this. There he goes. Finally, yeah, has he has five made, Zerglings. He made four Zerglings. And they're going to take out that Zealot. Sig pretty significant damage. We took off probably a third of the hatchery's total health. That means if he wants to go for a timing attack later or use this Void Ray that just popped out, and do a lot of damage. He's going to send the Void Ray, of course, first to take out the Overlord on the edge of the base that he tried to chase down earlier. Yep. It's an interesting... I mean, it's a trade-off situation, you show your Void Ray when you do that, but then you also supply block them oftentimes if you do that, so... This is very true. But what that means is he's not gonna... I mean, and it's very uncommon to see players really go for, like, a big attack and... Oh! Oh, that's what happened! He actually cancelled his Roach Warren right as it was about to finish. I'm sorry, so I missed that before. Uh, so there we go. Observer showing us that he actually cancelled the Roach Warren. That's why he... Switch things up a bit. Now building an infestation pit instead. Spore crawler going down at that third. Very smart. Yeah, you gotta make those spores. Because, you know, all sorts of things end up happening if you don't. It's a big investment to make the spores, but the Stargate as well is a big investment. Now, this Void Ray is gonna try to catch some Overlords as Trickster is, of course, trying to break out of his base. So we're gonna shot the Void Ray now. He's actually stopped two creep tumors. And also killed an overlord. And might just oh. gotta be careful with that void rate. Four. Oh, take some take some health damage. Down to 145 out of 150 health. The but, positioning uh, of the infestation pit makes it so the void rate can't actually scout that. Hmm. No matter how hard he tries to poke in, he's probably not gonna be able to get close enough. He's gonna try right now well, though. The void is actually going into the main. He's attacking the evolution chamber. And there's no second queen in the main. Trickster may decide to go for this queen. I think it would be a mistake, though. He does decide to back away. Yeah. Especially since he hadn't recharged all of his shields yet. Yeah. Overlord speed is done. The overlords are getting very mobile on the map here. He's going to catch another one as the third base goes down. So this Voidry has actually gone now up to four kills. He's been able to do a lot of damage with it. Clean up overlords, clean up watchtowers. And these uh, five Infestors are going to pop out with the Pathogen Gland upgrade, by the way. He timed it so that they popped out right after that upgrade finished. So they have a Fungal Growth each on them already. Very smart move. And he's also researching Burrow. And plus two melee weapons. And there we go. I was going to say Neural Parasite probably as well. Very smart move. And he researched that after he scouted the main. And I believe he saw that Colossus was coming out. Yeah, he saw the Robox from yeah. Bay. Checking for the third base. Lucera just doing... Great job with these overlords. Trickster has his Void Ray searching everywhere. He's got Stalker searching everywhere. But Trickster, uh, Lucera has sent his overlords in so many different places. Trickster can't stop them all. Yeah. And, you know, he finally did get in there, see those Colossi. He got Neural Parasite. Very now, there's been some move. controversy about what's going to be changed <laughs> from Neural Parasite recently. Um, to give you guys an update on that, a lot of people I know and heard the update. First, it was uh, announced that it was going to no longer affect massive new units, but that has since been reverted. But instead, I believe the range is two less than normal. Yeah. So it's still going to be very difficult to neural parasite Colossi in the future. Yeah, since uh, with the thermal lance, Colossus have a range of nine, and neural parasite used to have, well, still has a range of nine, and their proposed change is to reduce the range till seven. Yeah. So that they would actually have to get within range of the Colossus to neural parasite them and might die, basically, is the idea there. Make it more difficult to just take them over. Yeah, it also uh, affects Thors as well, but that's yeah. not the matchup we're talking about. The investors are sneaking around on the other side. He needs to be careful with them. I'm surprised he's not using Burrow to do that, because, of course, he has Burrow researched, and they're cloaked, in a sense, while that's going on. Avoid re-attacking a queen at the north. If he kills his queen, he might be able to do some damage to the hatchery. But a second queen is coming to join. I guess you guys won't get a shot of it, but... That's all right. but actually he has a lot of Zerglings coming in here. This might be suicidal by Lucera. He actually gets some fungals down. And Neural girls. Parasites, both of the Colossus, making it so they can't clean up the Zerglings. And the third Colossus gets knurled as it comes into the battle as well. And in the meantime, the Zerglings are able to just kill those Colossus. Beautiful move, actually. Is he going to walk that? No, he's not going to, but the Zerglings may be able to polish it off. No, probably not with those Zealots there. He's trying to. Did a lot of damage, though. That was actually really... I thought Lucera was just going to die there, but those clutch Neural Parasites taking over the Colossus saved all those Zerglings. And that one Colossus he controlled at the top of the ramp killed three Zealots on his own and damaged the Pylon quite significantly. Um, you know, he did a decent amount of damage, took over those Colossi, and during all that battle, Trickster was trying to take out the hatchery in the north, but he had a second queen there pop just in time to hold off the Void Race, so everything 
is just nice and dandy right now for yeah, Lucera. Lucera. He's got total map control. Lucera is looking good right now. And he's right now he's saving up money and he's getting a greater spire. He's getting out corruptors right now as well, which are gonna help against the Colossus. Who can't does not want to engage in that choke there. Um oh. Well, you oh, careful. What is he doing, two investors. Whoa. Nice micro by Trickster, just kind of taunting him a little bit with his Colossus, saying, please, please neural me, and then just killing the investors as they try to get too close. Bugging out with the passing with the Zerlings there. Now, this move out might be a mistake. A Colossus gets captured. And, and Zerlings running here, but there are a lot of Zealots. The second Colossus gets captured as well. He just kills off the Colossus with Zerlings and then retreats. Um, Lucira, I think that was a little bit of a mistake. I'd like so to see him just bungle there. these zealots instead and yeah. then retreat. And there he goes, bungling a lot of the zealots, even catching some stalkers. Charge is not quite upgraded yet, as we can see there. He's falling back, but there we go. That's I think that's what he was, should have been stalling for, is the Broodlords. He had a bunch of money saved up when the Greater Fire Spire finished. Eight Broodlords starting to morph now. And he just needs to hold off a little bit longer, though. A lot of Zerglings in production there, and I think that's what he needed, just that one fumble. Yeah, because guess what? There are only six Stalkers. When your opponent has more Broodlords than you have Stalkers, and you don't have any other answer, I don't know what you're going to do. He's going to uh, try to send these Zealots over here to end this base, but I don't think that's going to work. Sure. They will clean up the majority of these Zerglings, but the Broodlords can come and shut that down completely. Yeah, Charge Left's actually doing really, really well against those Zerglings, but... Doesn't do any good to chop up Broodlings, man. There's just more where that came from. So he's retreating with those Zealots. And this is not looking too good for Trickster. He's now behind about 50 supply. And he just, like you said, he just doesn't have an answer for those for those uh, Broodlords. He's making Archons. He's making a Void Ray. But still, just uh, I don't think it's going to be quite enough. I mean, he's made a Warp Prism even. He's going to try to do some of that harassment we've seen with Zealots and Dark Templar type of play where you just warp in a bunch of Zealots at a base and target it down, ignoring everything else that's going on, but even if he can kill a hatchery of Lysira somewhere, it's just not going to matter. Lysira has 92 drones out right now. He's got five bases. He's got all the saturation he needs. Look at how much damage these Broodlords are going to do. Even though the Stalkers blink forward here, there's just so many Zerlings, they're going to regret it. Void Ray is coming in from the side, though, targeting down these Broodlords. The Corruptors are actually attacking the Colossi instead, so these Broodlords are falling quite quickly. Yeah, this is actually a big, uh, kind of a big mistake by Lucera. He actually just kind of suicided a lot of stuff. Yeah, now he's losing Corruptors as well. And is not even going to get that Void Ray. Um, that was a little strange. I mean, you need to keep your Zerglings underneath your Broodlords to protect them from Blink Stalkers, but he just charged them in and let them die to, to Archons and Colossus Fire. So I'm not sure exactly what Lucera was thinking of that. He just does have too much supply, though. I think it might not even matter at this point. Well, there is a Warp Prism over in the corner um, that he's going to try to make use of. He already did force a cancel on a hatchery um, with that Warp Prism. Just warped in a few Zelts. He lost all the Zelts, but it doesn't matter. He's going to try to use it, I think, in just a second in the main base. There's that Warp Prism. He wants to make use of that, keep harassing Lucera, keep him in his base while he can secure another base, but there's an Overlord spewing creep, blocking the hatchery at the bottom right that he wants to take. There's also a Zergling there, and the Zergling isn't even burrowed. If he burrows the Zergling, then it's just going to get even more annoying to deal with. It's just so difficult right now for Trickster to take a fourth base. He really needs to, though. I guess Lucira is basically just taking advantage of his economy here. He's got a bunch of Zerglings out. He keeps losing tons of Zerglings, but I guess he feels he has infinite Zerglings. Large warp in here. Six Zealots rallied straight to that infestation pit. If he can take that out, that would actually be a huge... Yeah, his Void Rays could be much more effective. Not only that, but also his Colossi, if he can get that. He does get it. Warping in actually more Zealots here, and even the Zerlings and Broodlings might not be able to clean them up. Uh, just barely. Kind of surprising. Um, Trix doesn't have plus three, and he's just now starting getting plus one weapons for his Void Rays as well. These upgrades are something I feel he should have gotten a lot earlier since this game has gone on for 20 minutes. He's had plenty of time to research those. He just doesn't have a fourth base. He's sinking a lot of gas into those Colossi. Yeah, and uh, he only has a few Colossus at this point. Lucera has, has uh, very intelligently made a lot of Corruptors, and he hasn't changed the ball into Broodlords. That's going to be very helpful against the Void Rays and against the Colossi. Uh, he made a Nidus network that he might make use of defensively, perhaps, or uh, even offensively. He's got a lot of different opportunities. Now, it looks like the Creep doesn't quite block that Nexus, so he may be able to take this now. 
but it's very known about by Lucero. Lucero can just send oh, a group of units over Nidus there. Nidus Worm and in the main. Ooh. He doesn't see it. He is not reacting to this Nidus Worm at all, and I believe a bunch of Zerglings are going to pop out of it. It's not even in his vision. He can't see it. He sees it now. There we go. He's targeting down the Stargate, actually, with these Zerglings. A smart choice. And distracting in the front as well so that he can't fall back. And actually, he's not even doing anything about the big drop in his main. And here he's going to have to deal with a huge attack in the front as well. Corruptors going in. Zergling's taking fire so the Corruptors can kill off the Void Rays. Broodlord's coming from behind as well. He kills off all the Void Rays now, so he should probably fall back a little bit with those Corruptors. They are dying to the Archons very quickly, but they take out at least one Colossus in the meantime. Stalker's coming in from behind as well. There's no more ground units. He might be able to blink in and kill, kill those Broodlords. More Zergling's coming in from underneath, though. There's just so, so many Zerglings and Broodlings there. The Stalkers just can't engage this. And the entire main's been cleaned up. GG, Lucera makes Trickster look like a joke. 2 owing him here, pretty man. Pretty much, pretty much. I gotta say, I mean, that sounds really harsh, but that's what he made him look like in these games. Yeah, Trickster just not looking good at all in any of his four games. No, actually. man, not at all. And uh, so Trickster goes from... Uh, Two and eight in the last ten games to uh, two and twelve in his last sixteen games. Or yeah. Two and fourteen rather in his last sixteen games. He is now on a big, fat, stinking losing streak right yeah, now. Yeah, look at those L's right there, man. Um, so Trickster really not showing what he's capable of. I know he's capable of more play. He's been consistently stinging Kodats for several seasons now, and um, not doing too well in the up and down matches. And now here in the Arena of Legends not uh, initiating any kind of comeback. So that means Marine King and Lucera are going to be battling for the spot to get out of this group. Both players have one win, one win match, I guess, one match win against Trickster. So the winner of this next match between Marine King and Lucera is going to, in fact, take the semifinal spot from this group. Yeah, this is the, the final match. It's down to the wire. Marine King, who's had some struggles recently, but just barely punched his way out through the trap door. He's climbed out. He's now in Code S again. Yeah. He's playing against someone who made it all the way to the Code S finals two seasons ago. The countdown has started. Who is going to take it? Only one can advance out of this group. I am Wolf. With me is Moltrap. This is the Arena of Legends.